right? So perhaps if you're trying to communicate anonymously with someone else in the same region with you, then you have some different issues you have to deal with because it could be that the anonymity network is somehow compromised, right? If you can, if you can watch both sides, you can do a traffic correlation attack. And so if you are in Egypt trying to talk to someone else anonymously in Egypt directly, um, it makes it really hard to be anonymous if they know who you are to begin with and they know who you're talking to. So people that are under really heavy surveillance, the attacker can, for example, watch Alex and Bob and then they can break an anonymity system, almost any anonymity system, if, if it's low latency. If it's high latency, it's questionable. Like the Mixed Master Remailer Network, for example, the idea is if you watch the whole thing, you can't correlate an input with an output. Um, but no one really uses that. Uh, it's really difficult to use, and for the most part, it's not accessible. Um, so I mentioned previously there's this confidentiality aspect to anonymity. And for example, um, some people will advertise anonymity and say, like, oh, yeah, yeah, we encrypt our connection. And so like, we're anonymous. But it isn't, right? Like, Alice is talking to Bob. That's not anonymous. And um, there's this idea of uh, privacy by policy here. And the idea is like uh, you pay someone and you pay them, say, maybe like $5 a month for a virtual private network. And then you connect to that, say, like in Sweden or in Germany. This is very popular. And um, you, know, you say, uh, well, I connected and now I'm anonymous. And they say, well, we promise we won't tell uh, anybody who you are. Does that sound like strong anonymity to you guys? It does, right? It's really, really not strong at all, actually. Okay, so that's, that's this, this idea of privacy or anonymity by policy. And Tor tries to uniformly reject that. Um, we want to make it so that no single person in the network or no single entity in the network can actually say, hey, we promise not to tell, and then they, they, they won't, right? Like, in theory, if all of the Tor operators were to get together and, and collaborate, then, of course, they could all tell at once, and maybe you could do some sort of traffic attacks. It's almost certain you could. The question is, like, who would be affected by it? So we try to, like, shy away from this idea that, you know, you have wishful thinking as a security property, because wishful thinking is not a security property. Uh, it's really, <laughs> can you imagine the academic paper on that? Like, well, we found that in 90% of the cases, wishful thinking was actually not effective. <laughs> <laughs> And our sample rate was maybe not perfect, but um, and, so who here has ever tried to explain technology to their family? <laughs> not by fixing their computer, hands down for that one. Okay, all right. So um, you know, I I have to explain anonymity to lots of different people, and I love talking to computer science people because I can basically skip this one. People understand the need for privacy here. If you, for example, are wearing pants right now, you value privacy, <laughs> right? If you have curtains on your windows, you value privacy. If you are wearing a headscarf, you value your own personal choice to keep certain parts of your body private, right? I, I think that that is a fundamental human right, basically. Privacy is important for human dignity. And this one, most people understand this, but I'm really excited because the next two you will also understand. Businesses, they say, oh, network security, excellent. They don't care about privacy, they care about security. And if you're in computer science, you know that security has a lot of different meanings. And you know that, for example, network security is an important criteria to have in a tool. Like if it provides some sort of security, that's important. And for governments, it's traffic analysis resistance, right? And if you happen to be worried about a government, you also want traffic analysis resistant software, right? So it's kind of, it's kind of a trade-off there. And then for blocked users or for human rights activists or for people that are in China or the people that are in Iran or if you're, say, in uh, Lebanon on one of the uh, Ojero networks, um, you want to be able to have the ability to reach a site. And so anonymity, because of these, these privacy properties that it has, the confidentiality properties, that means that you actually have reachability. And that's something that's, that's pretty important. So there are a couple of different things that you could say, like who would, want, who would want these properties, right? It's not just human rights activists. I mean, if you ever use a service, right, on the internet, you, you are dealing with a third party in some way, usually. But you definitely are dealing with at least one other person, the person you're directly talking to. 
And so, for example, if you have an internet provider where you like log on to the website, like let's say you read Al Jazeera, and let's say you're like an exchange student in a country that maybe doesn't like Al Jazeera, um, maybe it could be an extremely bad situation if Al Jazeera ever decided to like sell their log files. They probably wouldn't do that. They're not hard up for money, right? Um, but maybe they might lose the logs because accidents happen, or maybe they don't care about that. Now, Al Jazeera is kind of a bad example, but it's, uh, it's a good one in that it's a, a juicy target, right? It's the kind of place where if they have the log information, someone might want to get that information, and they might succeed. So maybe you want to, for example, when using Al Jazeera Talk, use something like Tor. So that when you actually sign a comment with your nickname that you've picked up, that no one can later come back and tie those comments to you. So you can freely say what you think without having to worry that in, like, say, two years, someone's going to come back and use that against you. And I, I think that's really quite important, just because it means that if you are consuming information, you are not going to be persecuted for it simply for having read it. Like, um, I met some people here that do research on Wahhabi. Uh, Wahhabists, and you know, they said they aren't. They are not, you know, extremists, but um, they didn't want anyone to know that they read those websites because just reading them could incriminate them in certain parts of of the Arab world, and they didn't want anyone to think anything about them. It was no one's business to know what they were learning, and I thought that was really valuable. That, that just normal people want to be. Uh, basically able to avoid that kind of tracking because you leave behind a digital trail that tells a story. And depending on who's reading the story, you know, you have like the blind man and the elephant, right? You, you have someone that is saying something that could be true from the facts, but that isn't necessarily what happened. It isn't why it happened. It isn't necessarily uh, the reality that someone might construct five years later when poli like the political situation changes. So this is, I think, for everybody here, right? Like, you don't necessarily have something to hide, but then again, you still make choices, like, for example, wearing pants or having curtains, right? So businesses like to use anonymity as well. I mean, I guess if you're going to graduate, you want to learn about this aspect of it, right? Like, after graduation, unless you're going to be an academic. Um, but basically, like, people will custom tailor content, right? You can be targeted. If you're ever trying to watch, like, Hulu, for example, from the Middle East, um, depending on which country you're in, you can't do that because they discriminate based on which country you're in. If you are trying to read the Wikipedia from the United Kingdom, some of the pages are censored by people so-called, uh, you know, stopping, you know, like crimes against children or something like this. So they like erase history. So that be because of your location, you actually see something totally different. And because they can identify you, they can apply certain rules to you that maybe are not ethical, or maybe they shouldn't apply to you, or maybe you don't want the past to change. And maybe you, for example, want to find like the price of a thing and not have it be a special price because you happen to be in Jordan as opposed to, say, um, being in Lebanon, right? Um, and of course, the police, I mean, I'm sure some of you here have worked with the police or were, will work with them in the future. Anybody here? Like maybe raise your hand if you have. I mean, maybe you don't want to raise your hand, <laughs> I guess. OK. Um, like, for example, I met, uh, I met some people from the FBI at a Cisco meeting many years ago. And they sort of like joked. One of them said, you know, oh, um, yeah, I don't use that tour thing. That's crazy. You know, we have our own anonymity network at the FBI. I was like, what? You have your own anonymity network, and it's only used by people at the FBI? It's like, well, yeah. It's like, you're pulling my leg, right? This is a joke. You're not really an FBI agent, right? And he's like, no, no. I am. And then he had a partner or a friend that was also from the FBI with him. And he said, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, I, uh, I used to every day in my job. This, this guy's crazy. I was like, well, what are you guys talking about? Does, does the FBI really have their own anonymity network? It's like, well, it's not that they have, you know, maybe their own anonymity network, but they, they have a network that they use for doing investigations. And that, that network that they use for investigations is only used by the FBI. So what that means is you send an FBI agent an email, and you have them click a link, and they use their special investigation network. <coughs> and now you know that that is the FBI investigation network. <laughs> Brilliant, guys. Brilliant. <laughs> right? Like, that does not stand up. That is not a strong tool. That's, that is effectively a reverse privacy by policy. As an attacker, you promise not to attack them. Brilliant. That's brilliant. So you need to have a shared anonymity network, essentially, 